All right, in this video, we're going to look at functions, specifically um, increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals, minimums and maximums of functions, and even and odd functions. I'm going to talk through each of these topics very briefly because they're not too complicated. So take some good notes and we'll, here we go. First of all, what is a function? You should remember from Algebra 1 that a function, an equation, I'm sorry, is a function if no x values are repeated. It means there's all distinct x values. It doesn't ever turn back on itself. The graph will then pass a vertical line test. Okay, so looking at these two graphs, you ask the question, is it a function? In order to know, all I do is draw a vertical line. If it only hits the graph in one place, then yes, this is a function. So this is a yes, this is a function. Example two, draw the vertical line. I hit the, the graph in more than one place, so this cannot be a function. But what that tells you is the x values are repeated. x is 1 here, down here, and x is 1 up here. So again, x values cannot be repeated. All right, now looking at the increasing, decreasing, or constant intervals of a graph, okay? Looking only at the domain, okay, we're only looking at x values. Be careful of that you can determine an increasing interval. Visually, it's going uphill. Okay, the slope is going up. Decreasing means the slope is going downhill or in a negative direction. So this is slope is positive, slope is negative, or a constant means it is a straight horizontal line, horizontal segment, I should say. So you should know that that's where the slope of a line is zero, okay? Going uphill, going downhill, or a straight horizontal line portion of the graph, that's the slope of zero. That's constant. Those are your three, increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so looking at these examples, um, we're looking at the graph. If you're looking from left to right, always because it's domain, you decide at what portions of this graph is it increasing as I, as I move left to right. Well, as I move left to right, it's going uphill, and it continues to go uphill and go uphill forever. It doesn't ever start going downhill or to a horizontal line. So what I would say is the, the left hand is to, from negative infinity. Recall that this is point to negative infinity. This is pointing to positive infinity. It increases all the way through to all real numbers. What portions of the graph are decreasing? Well, none, at no point is this going downhill from left to right, so I would say none. What portions of this graph are horizontal? None of it, so I would say none. Look at example four. Increasing, all right? Decreasing and constant. Look at this. This is sectioned off, all right? If I section from here, this is increasing. Then from here down, this is a decreasing section, and then it increases again. All right, so I have to show these intervals. Remember the arrows. This is going to negative infinity. This is pointing to positive infinity. So from negative infinity, parenthesis, because that's infinity, to where it is x is neg negative 1. All right, it's a closed circle because there's it exists there. Closed circle bracket. All right, another place that it increases is where it's positive 1, where x is positive 1 to positive infinity. So I go from positive 1 to positive infinity. So there's two sections of this graph that it have an increasing slope. Decreasing, that's what's happening in between here, so I need to show that. From negative 1 to positive 1, the graph is going downhill or decreasing. What portions of the graph are constant or horizontal? None. Just leave it like that. Example 5. Increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, from here over, from the left, this is an increasing segment. It's going uphill. From here to here, it's horizontal, which means it's a constant segment. And then from this boundary all the way out, it is decreasing. Remember, your outer extremes are from negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's write this. From negative infinity up until you get to negative 1, it includes negative 1, the graph is increasing. From negative 1 to positive 2, it's constant, but it exists at these points. 
and then from positive 2 to positive infinity, it is a, oh, I got these messed up. Okay, from de for decreasing, <clears throat> that's where it's positive 2, goes all the way to positive infinity. That is the portion of the graph that's going downhill. The constant portion between negative 1 and positive 2, including those numbers, that's where it's constant. That's all there is to identifying the intervals as increasing, decreasing, or constant. Let me know if you have questions. Now the second part of this is identifying the minimum or maximum of a graph. Simply put, the maximum is the highest y value of a graph, minimum is, minimum is the lowest y value of the graph, okay? Okay, the minimum and maximum of a graph. The minimum is the, the highest point of a graph, the xy coordinate. I'm sorry, maximum is the highest point of the xy of the graph. The minimum is the lowest point of the xy of the graph. Minimum is the lowest point, the xy coordinate of that graph that's the lowest. That should make some sense to you. All right, look at this, example six. Here's this function, and I've graphed it for you. You need to look at it and eyeball it. Is it going to have a minimum, or does it have a maximum, a highest point or a lowest point? It's going to have one or the other. Well, it should make sense that this is the lowest. The it should make sense that this is the lowest the graph is going to get, so that is a minimum. And tomorrow in class, I will show you how to find that exact value for the point. So just leave that space open in your notes. We'll discuss it tomorrow. Right now just identify the minimum. Does it have a minimum or does it have a maximum? Example 7, here it is graph. It's a parabola opening down. Does it have a minimum point or does it have a maximum point? It's going on forever in that direction, negative infinity in that direction. So it has a highest value right here. That's the highest it gets which means it would be a maximum. Again, in class, I'll show you how to use those, the graphing calculators to find the exact point that represents the maximum. We want to talk about even and odd functions, or neither. Okay, a function is even if, when you look at its graph, it's symmetrical to the y-axis. Okay, meaning if you can fold along the y-axis, if you can fold this way, and the two and the lines fall right on top of one another, then it's symmetrical, and you can say that the graph is even. For instance, this absolute value graph is symmetrical because I can fold and the lines line up when I fold it. If I fold on this one, if I fold this way, but it's across the y-axis, the, the lines of the parabola will line up one and on top of one another. So this one is symmetrical. So what if it like is a parabola over here? Well, if I fold along the y-axis, there's nothing over here for it to fall on top of, so it's no longer even. So it would not be an even function, and you would say neither. So an odd function is symmetrical to the origin. So that requires two mental folds. That means fold across the y-axis and then fold across the x-axis. And if the lines match up, then it is symmetrical to the origin. For instance, look at this linear equation. If I fold straight across here and then fold it down, those lines will lie right on, on top of one another. So it's symmetrical. The cubic function, if I fold across the y, then across the x, the lines will lie one on top of another, and that would make it symmetrical. Okay? Anytime these lines don't follow those rules, then you would say neither. So if, if, I, if my line is over here, if I fold this way and then this way, they're not going to lie on one another, lie on top of one another anymore. So it's no longer symmetrical. So no symmetry means it doesn't meet either one of these criteria. So here, if I fold along the y-axis, definitely it doesn't match. If I fold along the y and the x, they still don't match, so I would say no symmetry. Same thing here with the square root. If I fold here, there's nothing over here for it to match up with, so it's not symmetrical. And then for odd functions, if I fold this way and down, it doesn't line up with anything, so it's not symmetrical. So as you do these problems, you're just going to look at the graph. You're going to put it in y equals, graph it, and just run these two tests, okay, across the y-axis and the origin test, across the y and then across the x.
and you should be okay on identifying whether it's even, odd, or neither.